in the later Ligocene, 28 million years ago, in what is now Eritrea, a cow-sized proboscidean with a shovel-shaped lower jaw browses on the tough vegetation of a teeming forest. In spite of having both a trunk and two tusks, this animal was not a modern elephant or an ancestor, but rather the ancestor of their relatives, named Eritrium. Earlier gompotherids, like the genus Platybalodon, had an elongated mandibular symphysis, giving it the appearance of a shovel. However, these very strange-looking proboscideans were related to other proboscideans that looked very similar to modern elephants, especially once they lost the shovel tusks. The disputed first member of the Gompotheridae, Eritrium, lived in what is today Eritrea in East Africa, meaning that similar to other families of proboscidean, the Gompotheres originated in Africa. You might see paleoart of early Gompotherids with shorter trunks, along with flatter trunks. However, there is no anatomical or cranial evidence for these shorter trunks, and it's likely they would have resembled modern elephants. The genus Gompotherium lived in what is today Afro-Eurasia and North America from the early Miocene to the early Pliocene. The genus Gompotherium lived in what is today Afro-Eurasia and North America from the early Miocene. This genus has 13 recognised species, along with 30 junior synonyms, showing just how widespread and successful this genus was. Though certainly small by the standards of modern elephants, at least in most species, some individuals of some species could attain sizes equivalent to those of modern African elephants, weighing nearly 7 tonnes. Some species of Gompotherium have been found to be browsers, though others are confirmed to be grazers. Considering that the Gompotheres were alive at a time when Earth was mostly drying up, with woodlands being replaced by grasslands, being able to take advantage of grass was hugely beneficial to a species' survival, leading to their persistence. Eventually, more recognisable genre would begin to emerge, which can be seen in Cynomastodon, appearing in the late Miocene and dying out in the early Pleistocene. Eventually, more... Cynomastodon remains are known from China, Japan, Thailand, Myanmar and Indonesia, and they possibly lived in India making it, at the time, one of the most widespread genre of proboscideans. However, even towards the end of the Pliocene Epoch, shuffle-mouthed gompotheres were still around, as can be seen in Rhynchotherium, containing just one species living from 13.65 to 3.6 million years ago. Stegomastodon and its four species were likely the killer of this particular genus, as they were around the same size, and Stegomastodons seem to have migrated into North America around the same time as Rhynchotherium's extinction. After a long portion of their existence was spent in North America, their existence here would be threatened by the onset of mammoths, which arrived from Russia into Alaska and then into the main portion of North America. Competition from other families of proboscideans is why we can find some of the last Gompotheres in South America, which is where they retreated to. Despite this, Gompotherids could still be found in Afro-Eurasia, as can be seen in Anarchus, which lived up until the early Pleistocene Epoch, around 2 million years ago. Rather than having a shovel-like mouth, Anarchus had incredibly long tusks. Anancus was also the only member in its subfamily, Anancidae. Anancus was also unique in that it was the last living member of the so-called Tetrabalodont Gompotheres. Interestingly, Anancus might have been one of the last three Gompotheres in existence, with possible remains dating to Europe around 11,700 years ago, right at the beginning of the Holocene Epoch. The last two surviving Gompotheres in South America were Cuviernus and Notiomastodon, both of whom survived till as recently as 11,700 years ago at the beginning of the Holocene. Around the mid to late 1990s, there was a third proposed Gompothere, Amphacotherium, although this genus does not have enough distinguishing traits to make it its own genre, and it is today considered a synonym of Notiomastodon. All remaining gobotherids discussed at this point went extinct around 11,700 years ago, 
right on the Pleistocene Holocene transition. This isn't really a coincidence. The extinction of these gompathies aligns nicely with the extinction of other megafaunal families and genera around the world, including grand sloths, saber toothed cats, and almost all mastodons. Climate change and human hunting are believed to have been the main factors in this extinction, which sadly took the gompathies. Climate change and human Gompatheridae lived across five different continents, showing how successful they were, and many unique species and genre took place, along with entire subgroups. Thankfully, we can still appreciate their relatives, modern elephantids, or simply elephants, which offer an invaluable snapshot into the not-too-distant past. Next week, I will be looking at the family Mamutidae, which contains the famous mastodons. I'll see you then.